So where we find ourselves at the end of, t- of this set of results is that the, we find the business is stabilizing despite the challenging conditions. We believe we're better positioned to implement on the, on the new strategy. We've, we've, we've sort of had market dynamics at COVID. Much as everybody believes uh, the telcos are immune to it, I don't believe that is the case. Uh, the COVID is, has been very protracted. It's had a huge impact on the FMCG market in general. It's really starting to be felt downstream now as we move into the recession. And consumers are under pressure, and we understand that. We've then obviously had internal factors, uh, our 189 process, the liquidity management, the, the delay in the recapitalization. But that said, we have managed to serve up better quality revenue and an improvement in the quality of earnings. Zaf will talk to the results, but effectively, we have based our strategy to maintain the profitable client base. Revenue has gone down, but is solid at a 13.8 billion. We have a profit and resilient customer base up at 12.5 million from our previous results of 11 in H1 of 2020. Uh, prepaid base um, has decreased, but the annualized ARPU has increased far higher than what the decrease in the base was. Contract base has decreased as well, but the annualized ARPU has increased uh, as well, which we uh, attribute to the better quality of the revenue. In terms of our quality of earnings, our direct expenditure and once-off costs down about 18%. EBITDA under normalized conditions up 30% in, in 2020. OPEX costs, excluding one-offs, our costs are down by over 14%. And for two years in a row, we've had no increase in any of the debt. And I think that's a very important thing. Yes, we are in a debt standstill, but we've not required any debt to be able to maintain the liquidity platform, which has been very important. And this has all been underpinned by the uh, ability of the network to stay stable in its revenue earnings um, and retain and acquire profitable customers, manage the network, and optimize costs as far as we've been able to. Total revenue was down 8%. Um, in terms of our gross margin, that came down at 7%. I'll talk a little bit later in terms of the normalized EBITDA, but from a reporting perspective, our EBITDA was down 25%, resulting in an EBITDA margin for 2020 of 21% and a net loss after tax of 5.5 billion rand. From a reconciliation of what we consider our normalized EBITDA, and this means we would take our 2019 on a normalized basis, i.e. if we didn't have any of the restructure and recapitalization costs in our business, and if we're looking at our business as a business as usual, and what would that mean for our business? There's really four main areas. The first one is revenue, and that's driven largely in terms of what we saw coming uh, a drop in our uh, customer base, and that was driven to focus on acquiring profitable customers. So we saw that a 5% drop in revenue and ARPU increased by 19% uh, on a total basis. And from a prepaid perspective, went up by 28%. The second big uh, category here, and probably the biggest on this slide, is a 1.5 billion change in our direct expenditure. And this 18% was driven mainly by roaming costs. And as I said earlier, we were looking at rationalizing our customer base, and you see that coming through in higher ARPU and a lower customer number. But those subscriber acquisition and handset and SIMS costs start to come through in our direct expenditure. From an operating expense point of view, that decreased by 11%. Again, this was driven by the decrease in our commercial expenses. We expect this to normalize going forward because of the recapitalization that's imminent. From an other income point of view, this was due largely to termination of our leaves obligations in the current year related to our transition of MTN phase two. From a cash flow point of view, we saw cash EBITDA at 844 million compared to 240 million in the previous year. This is an increase of 604 million. We wanted to highlight for you the difference between our first half and second half uh, and show you some of the changes that happened in the key performance indicators of our business. We continued with the optimization of our costs as well as our network strategy. Our revenue remained largely flat between the two halves. From an EBITDA perspective, we had a significant increase of 27%. This was driven primarily through direct expenditure savings, uh, and that resulted in a gross margin dropping by only 4%. From an operating expense point of view, we had a 17% drop in operating expenses, largely driven through our Section 189 process and commercial costs that were dropped in the second half of the year. From an EBIT and net loss perspective, as I mentioned earlier, the impairment and depreciation costs affected our results, and that came through in the first half of the year. And so you see that impact in our EBIT and our net loss. 
Again, that 5 billion rand change in first half was as a result of the impairment relating to our radio access network being impaired because of the transition to phase two, which will take the next three years to complete.